So previously, we were looking at the development of phylogenies, and we stated that phylogeny is all about inferring relationships based off of molecular and morphological data. The next type of, let's say, phylogenetic study, people consider a more pure form of phylogenetics, a more purest form of that study, and it's called cladistics. And we're going to entitle this next flowchart just that. It's called cladistics, and it's all about clades and looking at clade uh, organisms and clade relationships. We'll see what I mean. So, cladistics is all about putting the common ancestor first. What I mean is that common ancestry, common ancestry is of the most importance here. It is what we call the primary, the first and foremost thing, the primary criterion to classify organisms. Criterion to classify organisms. So you might be asking, how is this any different than what we've been looking at? Phylogeny was all about looking at common ancestry. But remember, phylogeny was a lot of inferring. We take the molecular data. We take the morphological data that we see and then we utilize it to establish common ancestry. This is the different way of thinking because this is saying common ancestry comes first and only when you have complete and utter common ancestry can you build relationships, can you build and classify organisms. It's a bit of a look at the same idea of phylogeny, but I consider it more purist phylogeny. You put common ancestry first. You don't care about the morphological or the molecular data. What you care about is always figuring out the common ancestry absolutely first and making sure that that is the first thing that's discussed. Um, in addition, in cladistics, we're going to be utilizing the idea of a clade. So a clade, it can be defined as the following. A clade is a group that includes so this cladistics are made up of clades, um, group that includes ancestral species, so we'll write that down, that includes the ancestral species. Ancestral species, think of that as the common ancestor that we're looking for. Group that includes ancestral species and all, all, of its descendants. So this is a all or none sort of type of thing that we're trying to look at. We're looking at a very pure form of common ancestry and we can also state that off of this definition each clade, each group that includes ancestral species and all of its descendants, each clade is um, nested with larger clades. So we're going to be seeing uh, more and more clades develop off of smaller and smaller clades. Look at a figure in your textbook to really drive home this idea of nesting. The most important thing to understand about cladistics is the quality of the clade. And that can be covered in the idea of the three major cladistic groups that we know of, that we classify. And some are better than others. There are those that are preferred cladistic groups and those that are really, really looked down upon and are not good ways of studying um, common ancestry as the primary criterion of classification. What do I mean by this? Well, first of all, the th of the most of the three cladistic groups, the most uh, valuable, the most uh, acceptable in the terms of cladistic study is called a monophyletic group. This is the best cladistic group, you could say. And in a monophyletic clade, that's what we would call it, a monophyletic clade, because it is exactly what the clade definition is. It consists of an ancestral species, okay? So it consists of that common ancestor, very old common ancestor, and absolutely all, all descendants of that common ancestor. So we'll write that down over here. And all descendants. So this is a pure, pure form of cladistics, the one that's most necessary. So we can state off of this three basic components that a monophyletic group satisfies, and that's what cladistics is all about. A monophyletic group, a group because it has an ancestral species and all of the descendants, will uh, automatically have all members share a common ancestor because of that ancestral species presence. So all members share common ancestor. And because all members share common ancestors, cladistics will call this a natural grouping. This is a natural grouping that is 
actually what has been observed and is seen in nature over the course of evolution. And so, for that reason, because this is a natural grouping in which all members share a common ancestor, just like how Darwinian evolution stated, we're going to call this type of phyletic group, let's say, something that very accurately represents evolutionary history. So this is a purist form of cladistics. This is a good one. So now we can have lesser accurate and lesser acceptable phyletic groups, cladistic groups um, in other words. Off of monophyletic, you can also have, let's say, a paraphyletic group. So I'm just going to do that down here since I ran out of space. We can have something called a para, para means near, phyletic group. So monophyletic group um, would be like a pure one, mono meaning one, one phylogeny, one ancestral species and all of its descendants. Paraphyletic group means, you know, you're kind of there. You're almost a phyletic group. You're almost a monophyletic group. What do I mean by this? In a paraphyletic group, we do indeed have our common ancestor. So we have the common ancestor, but the common ancestor is available uh, and is seen with some but not all descendants. Okay, but not all descendants share that common ancestor. Not all descendants. So we have um, a, a close but really not there. This is what paraphyletic groups are all about. And thus, because not everybody's sharing a common ancestor in this paraphyletic, near phyletic group, this is not considered a true evolutionary grouping. So not evolutionary grouping because it is not 100% pure and cladistic in its nature. It is not a pure clade. And finally, the worst type of phyletic group that you never ever want to use is something known as a polyphyletic group. Many phylogenies. That is not good in cladistic study. In a polyphyletic group, what we have is the following. We have distantly related. So that already sounds bad. Distantly related. Maybe not even related. Distantly related species and no recent common ancestor. That is key here. There's absolutely no recent common ancestor shared amongst these clades that are uh, that are of study. This is quite unnatural. This is quite not correct um, in terms of studying cladistics. And also, um, many oftentimes will see this and they will misinterpret it. Many misinterpret uh, polyphyletic groups for things that are supposed to be monophyletic. Many misinterpret the evolutionary relationships that come from a polyphyletic group because those evolutionary relationships are actually not even correct to start off with. So thus you have misinterpretation of those evolutionary um, groups. So overall, cladistics, I consider it a pure form of study of phylogeny. Um, a good way to understand cladistics is to definitely look in your textbook at a monophyletic group, a paraphyletic group, and a polyphyletic group. It really drives home the point if you visually see this type of clade, this type of clade, and this type of clade. Um, it's a very nice way of putting primary uh, concern onto common ancestry.